Rebuilding a Stuart Score engine, part four. Refitting the pistons, enlarging the mounting holes in the steam chest, packing the valve rod gland, making a slight modification to the slide valve, attaching the eccentric rod and setting the valve timing. Fitting gaskets and the first steam chest cover. The crankshaft, the main bearings and the connecting rods are very well made on this engine and they work beautifully. But that's enough time gazing lovingly at the structure I need to get on with the job. First one being, fit the pistons. The grooves in the end of the piston are very shallow. That's why I drilled a couple of holes in a previous episode to take a pair of circlet pliers. It makes fitting the pistons a lot easier and you can really get them tight on the piston rods. I was very keen to find out the frictional difference by fitting the pistons. With one piston fitted, it still felt very good indeed. So I tightened the piston permanently into position. Before any assembly of mechanical components, it's really important to oil any surfaces that are in contact with each other. Using the circlet pliers as before, I tightened the second piston onto the second piston rod. With the pistons now fitted, any surplus oil in the cylinder is pumped out of the ports. Here I'm just cleaning up the spillage. I didn't go mad on the port faces because actually they're in very good condition, just a bit tarnished. Here I'm fitting the studs to mount the steam chest in place on the end of the cylinder. This part is not running in real time as you can see. And due to the technical abilities of video editing, all the studs are quickly in position. I'm fitting the steam chest that was damaged first. I would think this is going to be okay. But it was actually a very tight fit on the studs. So I decided it would be a good idea just to minutely enlarge the holes. And for this I'm using my Proxon motor tool. The drill bit that I'm using isn't much bigger than the hole it's drilling. So it did tend to grab a little bit. But eventually I got through all four. This is the last hole to be drilled. Cast iron's really good stuff to drill, and as I wasn't enlarging the holes very much, all I got was some very fine iron filings. Before fitting the valve chest to the cylinder, I'm deburring it using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. One of the gaskets for the steam chests, thankfully, owing to the cost of new ones, was okay, and this was slid onto the studs as shown here. Before fitting the steam chest in place, I need to pack the valve rod gland. And just like with the piston rod gland packing, I'm using Teflon coated yarn. Once I felt that there was enough in there, I cut off the surplus with a Stanley knife. How much do you need? Well, it's a matter of personal taste. Up to a point anyway, if you put too little in, the nut goes too far into the gland, put too much in, and not enough threads engage with each other and you run the risk of it coming loose. The usual process is to tighten the gland nut, fairly tight, don't overdo it, then just back it off slightly and test the sliding fit of the valve rod. These slide valves were quite a tight fit on the drive block, so here I'm filing them a little bit. They don't need to be too slack, but they need to be a sliding fit so the pressure of the steam causes them to contact the port face. Once I'd finished the filing, I fitted the slide valve to the driving block. Then I slid the steam chest cover onto the studs, which also pushed the first gasket into position. The slide valve is not in the right place and will need some adjustment. First of all though, I need to set up the eccentric sheave. What I normally do is set the largest lobe of the eccentric sheave to be at 90 degrees to the crank pin. Not only is this a good starting point, it's often where it ends up. I've temporarily screwed the valve fork pin in place. And when I rotate the engine and move the piston up and down, I can clearly see that the timing is out. I did this on purpose. As you can see, the valve driving block is only just engaged on the threads. It needs to be a bit further down. It's a quick fix. After removing the valve fork pin, I screwed the valve spindle further into the slide valve drive block. Then when I estimated that the valve was in the correct position, I replaced the drive pin. And I rotated the engine, which told me that the valve was uncovering the ports at each end equidistantly, which is what I needed it to do. 
Being very careful not to damage it, I fitted the first of the three pounds each Stuart gasket. And that, I think, is excluding VAT and delivery. I won't be buying any more of these. The only thing positive I can say about these gaskets is they are a good fit. But then again, so are the ones I make myself at a fraction of this cost. This clip shows the steam chest cover fitted with four 7BA nuts. I'm very keen to see what the engine feels like when I rotate it, and I'm pleased to say it really does feel good. The engine, I mean. It turns over as smooth and as sweet as silk. Before doing exactly the same job on the other side, I'm going to run this engine in the next episode on one cylinder and see how it runs. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.